Good morning and welcome to St Catherine's Good Friday morning service. I'm Stuart. I'm Valerie. And fear not, we know that it's not St Catherine's in the background. But for our service this year, we're going on a pilgrimage. Pilgrimage may seem a grand word for just going from St Michael's to St Catherine's, but if pilgrimage is a journey with a religious motive, well, then this is a pilgrimage. We've come away from the road noise to explain how the service is going to work this morning. We're going to be following the St Michael's to St Catherine's Easter Trail. Along the way, we'll have songs brought to us by Tony and some edible crafts too. And we're going to be stopping at 10 different points on our journey to tell the Easter story. So somewhere here at St Michael's is the beginning of uh, our Easter story. Now the Bible is one huge story and the Easter week story isn't at the beginning and it's not actually at the end but many people think it's the most important part of the Bible. Jesus's life on earth and in particular the last week of his life. So we're going to walk from St Michael's to St Catherine's looking for ten eggs on a kind of pilgrimage and each egg will tell us something about the story. Um, but we've got to find number one before we can start. Let's go look for it. Come on then. Here we are. We found the first egg. It's an egg-shaped palm leaf. And the palm leaf reminds us about Palm Sunday. And that's where we're starting our story. At each stop, we'll have a different person telling us a bit more about the story. Let's listen to that now. Jesus and his friends had arrived in Jerusalem to celebrate the festival of Passover. News had spread that Jesus was on the way, and a huge crowd gathered. They put their coats on the floor and grabbed palm leaves to wave. What a surprise when Jesus arrived. He was riding on a young donkey. It was just as the prophet Zechariah had written over 400 years before. Zechariah 9 verse 9. Rejoice greatly, people of Jerusalem. Shout for joy, people of Jerusalem. Your king is coming to you. He does what is right and he saves. He is gentle and riding on a donkey, on the colt of a donkey. So, we're off on our journey, or pilgrimage as you were. We've got our map, we've got our bag, We've got our selfie stick. We've got our camera to record things. Let's go. So, we're on our way, walking alongside a busy road. I bet it was busy when Jesus entered Jerusalem on that donkey. And of course, they were all singing. Uh, sometimes you sing when you're walking along, don't you? Yeah, don't we know a song like that? I think we do know a song about that, don't we? So let's use as a song of worship where they proclaimed their king arriving in Jerusalem. Why don't we sing, we have a king who rides a donkey. donkey. We have a king who rides a donkey, we have a king who rides a donkey, we have a king who rides a donkey, and his name is Jesus. Jesus the King is risen, Jesus the King is risen, Jesus the King is risen early in the morning. Trees are waving a royal welcome, trees are waving a royal welcome, trees are waving a royal welcome for the King called Jesus. Jesus the King is risen, Jesus the King is risen, Jesus the King is risen early in the morning. We have a King who cares for people, we have a King who cares for people, we have a king who cares for people, and his name is Jesus. 
Jesus, Jesus, the King is risen, Jesus, the King is risen, Jesus, the King is risen early in the morning. What shall we do with our life this morning? What shall we do with our life this morning? What shall we do with our life this morning? Give it up in service. Jesus, the King is risen, Jesus, the King is risen, Jesus, the King is risen early in the morning. We've found the second egg. If you look closely, you'll see painted on the egg is some bread and a cup of wine. This is to remind us about the Last Supper. Let's listen to that part of the story now. The Last Supper. Jesus and his friends had a special meal together. Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. He wanted them to know that he had to be a servant to others. Jesus told his disciples he was going to die. He shared bread and wine with them saying, Take this bread and eat it. This is my body. Every one of you drink this. This is my blood, which is the new agreement that God makes with his people. This blood is poured out for many to give, forgive their sins. Let's continue on our journey then. It's interesting hearing about the Last Supper because people still do that today, remember it today as communion in church. But whether it's a religious thing or not, it's always good to share food with people, isn't it? Oh, definitely, yeah. And that reminds me, hasn't our craft got something to do with oh, food? Oh, yes, we've got an edible craft for you today. I think Phil's over in his house going to do it for us. Mm, so let's go to Phil's house to hear about the ingredients with Craft with Phil. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Craft with Phil. I'm going to be talking you through our Good Friday craft today. Uh, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing a Easter garden, as is quite traditional um, on Good Friday. Uh, there's a bit of a twist on it today. Uh, today we're going to do a completely organic uh, Easter garden. Uh, now when some people say organic, uh, they mean it's all been grown outside without any pesticides or chemicals. That's what some people uh, hear when they hear organic. Um, I'm a little bit different. Uh, when I hear organic, I hear edible. Um, so uh, I say an organic Easter garden, but you may uh, prefer to call it an edible Easter garden. And I'll show you how to make it um, in a bit. But first, I'm going to show you the ingredients that you will need to make our edible Easter garden. Uh, so the first thing you will need um, is a digestive biscuit. Um, you don't need a whole packet, um, in fact you only really need one, but um, they're hard to buy individually so you might just have to eat um, a few digestive biscuits, um, but it's, it's a burden but one we will be willing to pay. And um, you'll also need a packet of jammy dodgers. Um, there's lots of different jammy dodgers you can get. I've got this one because they've got cream in the middle of them. Uh, now what with the craft works with or without cream but I just feel jammy dodgers should have cream uh, so that's why I bought this one. Um, you're also going to need two more ingredients. You will need um, some green uh, icing. <laughs> uh, if you haven't got green icing you could get some icing sugar uh, and make that up into icing and then use green food colouring. Uh, and the final thing you will need and is something like this. Uh, these are special edible mini flowers uh, that you can usually find in the baking aisle um, of a supermarket. So those are the four ingredients uh, that you need uh, and I'll be showing you how to turn them into this. Brilliant. So I will show you um, how to do that later, uh, but for now we're going to return uh, to the Easter story and we're going to return to our trail. We found egg number three. This part of our story tells us about Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane. After their meal together, Jesus and his disciples went to the Garden of Gethsemane. 
Jesus took time to pray, asking God to help him with the challenge he was about to face. While Jesus prayed, his disciples fell asleep. Jesus was disappointed that his friends could not stay awake with him while he prayed. The disciples did not really understand what was going to happen. Then Judas, who had betrayed Jesus, arrived with soldiers who arrested him. It's interesting, isn't it, that even Jesus needed to stop and pray to his father. We'll think more about that later. Now, let's walk into town to see if we can find egg number four. We've arrived at Village Properties and it looks as though we've found egg number four. This egg shows us a cockerel crowing. It's part of the story you might not have heard before. While Jesus had been eating with his disciples, he had warned them that one of them would betray him. Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, was horrified. Not me, he cried. I would never betray you. It is not you, Jesus explained. But Jesus knew that Peter would deny knowing him. He said, Matthew 26, verse 34, I tell you the truth, tonight before the rooster crows, you'll say three times that you don't know me. After Jesus was arrested, Peter was waiting in a courtyard to hear what was happening. Somebody recognised him as one of Jesus' followers. Peter was scared, so he denied that he had ever known Jesus. Then somebody else asked him, and somebody else. Each time, Peter denied that he had known Jesus. After Peter had denied Jesus three times, a rooster crowed, and Peter remembered what Jesus had told him would happen. So even Peter, who would go on to become a great follower of Jesus, did, at this point, let Jesus down and lied about him. It's interesting, isn't it, that even great men can let Jesus down. We're just leaving town now. We're going to carry on walking to our next stop. All this walking's making me hungry. Really? Oh, yeah. I wonder how Phil's getting on with our edible craft. Oh yeah, let's go over to Craft with Phil. Hello, welcome back to Craft with Phil. Um, I've already shown you the ingredients you need uh, to make our edible Easter garden. Uh, so let's get started. One thing I should have said is we need to wash our hands uh, before we start. Uh, so once you've washed your hands, you need to get your digestive biscuit with a bit of the green icing and then we squidge the icing down on the biscuit just like this. Now this green icing is going to be the grass that covers up most of our garden. So we want it right across all of the, the biscuit. As you can see we're squashing it down so that's why it's really important that we wash our hands. Um, and then once we've got that we get one of our jammy dodgers. Uh, so this is going to be um, it's going to be the um, the open tomb. And so we cut it in half like this. There you go. And can you see uh, we've got the jammy dodger, which makes looks like a little uh, little hill, and then you've got your little bit of jam in the middle there, which is the opening. And then we pop that down just like that. So then it's in it's in Easter Garden. So you've got the green, and then you've got the the hill with the open tomb on it there. Now, you don't actually need the other half of this biscuit, uh, so you can eat it. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't talk while I was with my mouth full. Um, so then we just need to add a few of these little flowers all around just to make it all gardeny. And there we go. So to that, that's all you need to do. But what we could do, if we want to be a little bit, um, a little bit adventurous, should we put some crazy paving in our garden? Uh, for crazy paving, all you need is an extra uh, digestive. Uh, cut a little bit off. You don't need much of it. And get your warning pin. Squash it up, and then you can have. Well, let's put, let's put the crumbs down there as a little pathway uh, for the disciples to get 
to and from the empty tomb. So there we go. There is the Easter garden. And I will tell you what it tastes like in a bit, but for now we're gonna go back to our story. We found the fifth egg and painted on this egg is a crown of thorns. Our story gets a bit sad now. Jesus had to wear this crown of thorns as they made fun of him and mocked him, even though he'd done nothing wrong. Let's listen to that part of the story. Jesus's trial. Jesus was brought before Pontius Pilate to be judged. Pilate asked Jesus if he was the king of the Jews. The soldiers mocked Jesus. They gave him a crown made of thorns and a robe to wear. Over the cross they put a sign saying, Jesus, King of the Jews. Pilate knew that Jesus was innocent, but the crowd called out, Crucify him! So Pilate washed his hands and told them, I am not guilty of this man's death. You are the ones who are causing it. That was from Matthew chapter 27, verse 24. So even though we call Jesus our King, they mocked him for it. But he was a different sort of King. He was a King who came to serve others. And that's an idea we use in our next song of worship, the Servant King. From heaven you came and burst faith And to the world your glory veiled Not to be served but to serve And give your life that we might live This is our God, the Servant King He calls us now to follow Him the daily offering of worship to the servant king. There in the garden of tears, I am a load you chose to bear. His heart with sorrow was torn. Yet not my will, but yours, he said. This is our God, the Servant King. He calls us now to follow Him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the Servant King. Come see His hands and His feet, the scars that speak of sacrifice. Hands that flung stars into space To cruel male surrender This is our God, the Servant King He calls us now to follow Him To bring our lives as a daily offering Of worship to the Servant King so let us learn how to serve, and in our lives enthrone Him, each other's needs to prefer, for it is Christ we're serving, this is our God, the Servant King, He calls us now to follow Him. Bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the Servant King. We've continued our pilgrimage and we've arrived at the sixth egg. This part of the story, it's a bit sad and it's where the Romans really aren't very nice to Jesus. Let's hear a bit more about it. Jesus is beaten. 
Jesus was beaten by the soldiers. We refer to this beating as receiving stripes. When Jesus was on the cross, he was pierced in the side. The prophet Isaiah had predicted that this would happen when he wrote, But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. Isaiah 53 verse 5. So here we are at the seventh egg, the most important part of the story, which everybody knows, that Jesus died on the cross. But when he did that, some incredible, miraculous things happened. Let's hear that part of the story. When Jesus was killed on the cross, the sky went dark. There was an earthquake. People came to life who were dead and the curtain in the temple was torn in two. Jesus died as a sacrifice for us so that all our sins might be forgiven. In the past, the temple curtain had separated people from God's holy place. Now Jesus had made a way for everybody to draw close to God. So incredible things happened when Jesus died on the cross. But why did he die? Let's go over to Phil, who can tell us some more about that. So you've just heard um, about how Jesus died on the cross. Uh, now, a lot of people ask me why Jesus died on the cross. And there's lots of reasons why Jesus died on the cross. But one of the reasons uh, that Jesus died on the cross uh, was so that we could be forgiven uh, for our sins, for all the times we've done something wrong, for all the times we've been naughty if we say sorry uh, because of Jesus dying on the cross we can be forgiven uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say a prayer uh, a prayer saying sorry to God for all the things uh, that I've done wrong all the bad things that I've done and at the end of that prayer I'm going to say amen uh, which is a bit of an old-fashioned word but it means yes I agree uh, so I'm going to pray my prayer um, and if you would like to say sorry to God why don't you say amen at the end of it um, and then we can all be forgiven uh, for those naughty things uh, that we've done in the past uh, so I'm going to pray now Lord God we thank you for Jesus thank you that he came to die on the cross so that I could be forgiven I'm sorry for all the bad things I have done for all the things that I have done wrong and I pray that you might forgive me because Jesus died for me Amen. Friends, if you prayed that prayer with me, if you said Amen at the end of the prayer, then the good news is your sins are forgiven. You don't have to feel guilty uh, for the naughty things that you've done. Uh, and that is really, really good news. And now we're going to go back to the story to hear some more good news. Thanks for that, Phil. So... As Phil's indicated, this isn't the end of our story. There's more incredible things to hear about after three days. So let's carry on to find the next point in our pilgrimage. We've just arrived at egg number eight. And this is where the good news continues. Something incredible's happened that the ladies who go to sort out Jesus' tomb, find out after a few days. Three days later. Three days after Jesus had died and Mary went to visit the tomb where Jesus had been buried, when she arrived the tomb was empty. An angel appeared to Mary and told her that Jesus was no longer in the tomb, he had risen from the dead. Then Jesus appeared to Mary, at first she thought it was the gardener, but then she realised who it was. And she was amazed. So, clearly the story isn't over. But you've guessed that because there's two more eggs left to find. So let's go and find them to hear more exciting news about Jesus being alive. Here we are at egg number nine. When Jesus came back to life, he appeared to lots of different people. Let's hear a bit more about that. A visit from Jesus. After Jesus had risen from the dead, he appeared to many people, including his disciples. He showed them the wounds in his hands and feet and reminded them of how much he loved them. 
Jesus told his disciples, Go and make followers of all people in the world, baptise them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teach them to obey everything that I have taught you, and I will be with you always. Matthew 28, verse 29 to 20. So, our pilgrimage is nearly at an end. We've done nine now, and we're going on to the tenth and final egg at St Catherine's. Now we've heard that Jesus has come back to life, it's reminded me about something that happened earlier on. What, you mean back when Jesus was praying at egg number three? Yes, that's right. Well, we've learnt that Jesus has helped our relationship with God the Father, so just like Jesus prayed yep. to the Father, we can as well. On uh, previous videos, we learnt what's called the Lord's Prayer with some actions. So oh, they're fun. Let's remind ourselves of those actions as we can say together what's known as the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And here we are at St. Catherine's. And here's our final egg. We found the last point on our pilgrimage. The story continues. Jesus returned to heaven, but the story does not end there. At Pentecost, we remember how God sent a helper, the Holy Spirit, so that we can live for God on the earth just as Jesus did. Christians believe that the Easter story is an invitation from God to accept his love and to receive forgiveness. Jesus took the punishment for all our sins. No mistake is too big to keep us from God anymore. All of us are invited to be his friend. So as our final egg looks like sun shining down from heaven, we finish our pilgrimage with the great news that we can be friends with Jesus and join him in heaven. And so our pilgrimage is finished. We're here at St Catherine's seeing the lovely Easter garden, which you can just see behind us. Well, a walk like that certainly makes you hungry, don't you think? Oh, definitely. I wonder if Phil's finished those biscuits yet. Oh, I hope so. Should we go and see? Let's go over to Craft with Phil. Hello, welcome back. Um, we saw the ingredients. Uh, you've seen me make it. So the only thing that's left to do is to eat, uh, eat our Easter garden. Um, now my top tip for trying to eat this Easter garden is don't try and put it all in your mouth uh, in one go because um, it's unlikely to fit. Um, so I think there are two um, methods of eating uh, that you could do. Uh, you could go for the kind of little nibble around the edges and kind of slowly work your way in um, or you could go with the deconstructor. You could pull it off, um, pull off bits and eat bits. Um, I'm going to model both types of eating for you. Um, so the little nibble around the edge goes like this. You need to follow through, otherwise things start falling off. But just as legitimate is pulling it apart. It's entirely up to you how you want to eat it. Um, I think pulling it apart was marginally better, um, but nibbling is just as good. 
So I hope you enjoy making your Easter gardens and I hope you enjoy eating them um, however you choose to eat them. So I hope you've enjoyed our pilgrimage, a rather short one though it was, and I hope it's encouraged you to do it because uh, we've not really done everything. On each of the displays, you may have noticed that there was uh, also an activity or a question for you or your family to do. So for you to see what that activity or question is, you're gonna to have to walk the trail yourself. I hope we've encouraged you to do that. Uh, I hope you get out there. I hope you have fun with families and children. And Phil's got something to tell us about other videos that we produce here at St Catherine's, specifically aimed for the young or the young at heart. So I just want to quickly tell you about something we've started recently at St Catherine's called Cats Cartoon Club. Now, Cats Cartoon Club, uh, the idea is uh, that we can all meet together uh, to watch a cartoon together uh, and then do a bit of craft and a bit of thinking um, about that cartoon and a Bible story. Um, we started it a couple of months ago um, in lockdown. Um, so at the moment, we can only do it online. Um, so we pick out a cartoon to watch. Uh, we watch it and then we all join in together uh, watching a video with another cartoon um, and some craft and something to think about. Um, there's a few up there already on our Facebook page, so do look on our Facebook page, go to the videos, go to the playlist, find Cats Cartoon Club and you'll find videos about Sleeping Beauty, about Finding Nemo, about Frozen and there's others as well on there. Um, so do check out our previous ones that are online uh, one day very soon uh, now. Now things are starting to open, we hope we'll be able to meet physically uh, to put on a cartoon on our big screen um, in the church hall. So keep checking our Facebook page for more details. Uh, but for now, if you go to the Facebook page, go in the playlist, find the Cats cartoon one uh, and find a cartoon you'd like to watch or you have watched. Uh, we'd love for you to enjoy these videos that are already up there on the playlist. Thanks, Phil. I'm looking forward to that. Well, we've been doing a lot of walking in our video today and the story finished with a hint of uh, another marvellous thing that happens, but that's another story, Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes. We're going to take those two ideas of the Holy Spirit coming and walking for our final song of worship, Walk, Walk in the Light. The Spirit lives to set us free. Walk, walk in the light. He binds us all in unity. Walk, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light of the Lord. Jesus promised life to all.
kindness is revealed. Walk, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light, in the light of the Lord. The Spirit lives in you and me. Walk, walk in the light. His light will shine for all to see. Now, let's finish by saying the words of the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So thank you so much for joining us for our Good Friday service and a big thank you to everybody else who contributed with this video. Our readers? Aaron, Daisy, Joseph and Nicola. Uh, very, thanks very much to Tony for our music. For Phil for doing all the cooking. And for everybody who volunteered to have display boards in their front garden, thank you. And especially uh, Pete B for making all the boards <laughs> that they were nailed to. It's uh, good that many members of our community here at St Catharines could contribute, maybe in front of camera or often behind the scenes. We hope you have a good Easter. God bless. Bye. Bye.